Next section, last section, uh, chapters 19, 20, and 21. On page 155. <clears throat> when Eric finally paused to rest, he tried to reason out what the man might do next. With no kid to present for a ward, would he just go home and forget the whole thing? Or would he tell the police where he'd seen Eric, figuring the information might be worth something? Might he try to get some money from Oma and Big Daryl for Uncle Dan's gun? The possibilities ran circles through his head until he gave up trying to guess. All he could do, he figured, was decide on a plan of his own. To his relief, he realized that the storm appeared to have blown itself out. The cold front that had swooped in ferociously, bringing the snow with it, had passed. One by one, stars began to show themselves, and a three-quarter moon became visible. After a while, Eric was able to spot the Big Dipper, and from there, to find the North Star. He'd been running south. Now he would follow the star and head north. He reached down and hugged Quill to him hard. Then he stood up and started walking. Using the stars, they walked through the night. And when the sun rose, they kept on, moving steadily north. When Eric was thirsty, he ate snow, and Quill did the same. Quill's energy never flagged in the clear, cool air, though Eric felt his own pace slow from time to time. With no gun and no food, he didn't stop to hunt or eat or sleep. Quill scrounged food wherever she could, dead mice and moles, scat from various animals, things Eric couldn't identify and wasn't sure he wanted, wanted to. Oddly... He didn't feel hungry. A vague but strong sense of purpose gripped him, driving him to retrace his steps back to where he had started. <clears throat> As he walked, it seemed to him he was seeing the life of the prairie with great sharpness and clarity. He stopped to watch a coyote hunting in the grass for mice, pouncing, chasing, pouncing, and chasing like a kitten at play. When the coyote finally looked up and saw him, it went slinking away. He watched a mark marsh hawk soar low along the ground and dip gracefully to catch a mouse in its talons and saw a red tail hawk drop from the bare branches of a lightning scarred tree to snag a pheasant from the grass below when they came to a wide area of rolling hillocks they spooked a covey of sharp-tailed grouse air occurred for the first time their alarm call call Ooh. as they flew over the next rise and disappeared Night fell again, and they still kept on. Eric's eyes became accustomed to the darkness, and he was aided by the light from the moon and the flames of one of the gas fires burning at an oil rig on the outskirts of Fortuna. When he recognized the barn and corral where he had gotten water his first night out, he felt proud that he was on the right track, that he was finding his way. And then, several hours later, he came to the straight line of trees bordering the side of his grandparents' farmhouse. He approached and the house itself loomed before him. When he walked around the corner and stood for a moment at the porch steps, he saw a bluish light coming from the downstairs window. Creeping closer, he peered in and saw Big Daryl sitting and watching the snowy picture on the old television set. The sight of his grandfather caused him to stop, his heart thudding nervously. He watched for several moments, wondering what Big Daryl, who kept farmer's hours, was doing up at what he had what had to be close to two o'clock in the morning probably he was too angry to sleep and was contemplating what he'd do when he got his hands on eric at last quill perhaps anxious either to go inside or move on let out a little whine and big daryl startled lifted his head to listen he stood walked to the door and opened it gazing blindly into the darkness for a moment dan he called in a low voice dan then he shook his head and rubbed his eyes and peered closely at Eric, who must have appeared to him as nothing more than a shadowy shape. Eric, is that you? Yes, Eric said, climbing up the stairs, mindful of the broken step Oma had warned him about the first night he'd come. It seemed a very long time ago. It's me. He reached the porch. Quill followed and stopped, facing his grandfather. Before he could say anything more, Big Daryl gathered him in a clumsy embrace made more awkward by the pack on Eric's back. In the silence afterwards, Big Daryl said in a, very, in a voice so low 
Eric had to strain to hear. I lost one boy. Didn't think I could stand to lose another. Chapter 20. Eric was too stunned to speak. To his relief, he was saved from answering by Big Daryl, who cleared his throat and said hoarsely, I expect you could use some food. Aren't you going to yell at me, Eric asked. He was sure that's what his parents would have done. Once they'd seen that he was safely home, it was certain, certainly what he'd expected from Big Daryl. I'd leave that, I'll leave that to your grandma, Big Daryl said with a tired smile. In the porch light, Eric saw the weariness etched into Big Daryl's face and understood for the first time how much both of his grandparents must have suff suffered while he was gone. I I'm sorry, Big Daryl. Was Oma real upset? I'd guess she lost two pounds for every day you were gone. Eric winced. What about my parents? We were going to tell them in the morning. You didn't tell them yet? Eric asked inc incredulously. Eric, Big Daryl shrugged. There didn't seem any point to it, not until we knew something for sure. There was nothing we could do. All the way over there, and your grandma didn't want to upset them, she kept saying, hoping, really, that you'd come back. Eric shook his head in wonder. He was relieved that it wa he wasn't in big trouble, with his parents anyway, and deeply puzzled by the apparent change in his grandfather. He started to follow Big Daryl inside, then paused, looking down at Quill, who was sitting and waiting patiently. What, what about, he began. Before he could finish, Big Daryl surprised him again by saying, the dog too. I don't need to ask if she's hungry. Not if she's anything like, like Elvis was. <clears throat> Sitting in a chair in the warm kitchen seemed unreal to Eric after his days and nights outdoors. To add to the un unreality, Big Daryl was acting nice. He had allowed Quill into the house without blinking an eye. He and Eric were having a normal sort of conversation. After so much time spent talking to no one but Quill, all of this was making Eric feel a little punchy. Oh, she's hungry, all right, he said. You got any dead moles? Rabbit poop? Big Daryl laughed. A deep, hearty sound Eric hadn't heard before. Then he glanced toward the ceiling and said, I hope I didn't wake your grandmother. I think she might finally be getting some sleep. They didn't say anything for a while. As Big Daryl moved from the counter to the stovetop to the toaster, his brown knit his brown knit with concentration, watching him, Eric guessed that Oma did almost all the cooking and that the kitchen was unfamiliar territory for his grandfather. But Big Daryl worked carefully and methodically, and the mouth-watering smells of sizz sizzling butter and frying eggs and ham soon filled the room. The quiet felt comfortable. Not at all like the charged and hostile silence that had surrounded Big Daryl before. Eric was glad for the change, even if he didn't understand it, and he was so tired he almost dozed off sitting at the little oak table. When the food was ready, Big Daryl filled two plates, slid one onto the floor for Quill, and placed the other in front of Eric, along with a glass of milk. Quill gulped her food and so did Eric. When he'd finished... With a large swig of milk, Big Daryl said, I need to tell the sheriff's office you're back. He made the call, saying that Eric was back, unharmed, and thanking them for their trouble. After he hung up, he said, The dispatcher, dispatcher says he can't believe nobody found you sooner. There have been a lot of folks looking, you know. We weren't sure whether you'd run off or gotten lost. The sheriff asked if maybe you got in a car with somebody and headed back to New York. We, we, we just didn't know what to think. I'm sorry. I thought, well, I don't know what I thought. I didn't have much of a plan. I just wanted to get away, Eric nodded. The day you took off, I came home to find the house empty. Do you know your grandmother actually got in the truck and drove off to look for you? She did, Eric asked in amazement, but she did, doesn't drive. Not for 34 years, she didn't. I guess she does now. Big Daryl actually grinned as he said this, and Eric grinned back. She's the one who figured you didn't want to be found. She believed you'd come back when you were ready, and I guess she was right. Big Daryl was quiet for a moment. Then he let out a huge yawn and said tiredly, I think we'd both better hit the sack. That sounded like a wonderful idea to Eric, but before he slept, it was something he needed to confess. Big Daryl didn't seem angry, but he didn't know anything Eric had done. A man found me and wanted to turn me in for a reward, he, he blurted. Big Daryl nodded. We got a call about that. 
I got away from him, but but he he took Dam's gun. We heard that too. Seems the fellow showed up at the sheriff's office thinking he'd get a a reward for returning it. They set him straight about that. We'll be getting the gun back. Eric let out a huge sigh of relief. Big Daryl was headed for the stairs. We can talk about all that tomorrow, he said over his shoulder. You're home safe. That's the main thing. Eric and Quill followed. The big and Big Daryl paused outside the bedroom on the left at the top of the stairs. The one that had belonged to Dan. The door was open. Good night, he said. Eric still stood still, unsure what to do. Big Daryl added, It's a boy's room. Your grandmother says you should have it. You sure? Big Daryl nodded. Eric stood in the door, doorway for a moment before going into Dan's room. He was very tired, and when he looked around, he wondered if he might already be asleep and dreaming. The photograph of Dan that had been on the dresser was gone, along with the purple heart and the dog tags. On the wall, instead of the flag, was an old painting of a hunting scene. He climbed into bed with Quill, curled up beside him. He didn't know how long he'd slept when he was awakened. Not by a sound, but by a peculiar sensation of being watched. He opened his eyes to see the outline of a figure standing by his bed. Oh, Eric, Oma whispered. I didn't mean to wake you. I had to see for myself. Here you are, safe and sound. And... Her voice broke then, and Eric could hear that she had begun to cry. He got out of bed and hugged her, patting her back the way he remembered his mother doing when he was little. He felt awkward about doing this, but the darkness helped. He was surprised by how glad he was to see her. Oma, he said in a small voice, I'm really, really sorry. He felt a shudder pass through her small body, which felt even more frail and bird-like to him than before, and he was filled with remorse. I guess I wasn't thinking about uh, anything or anybody but myself. After several minutes, Oma took a deep breath and pulled away from his embrace. There was enough light so he could see her looking into his eyes. You had your reasons for running off, I expect. Did you find your, some answers? Eric was surprised again by her question. He, he nodded. The Lord works in mysterious ways, Eric. I hope I never have to go through anything like the past five days. But something wonderful has happened, and it couldn't have happened without you running off the way you did. Eric shook his head, confused. I don't know what you mean. You run off? It changed, Big Daryl. Eric pondered this. He did seem different, nicer, not so scary. Not so scared, Oma corrected. Big Daryl was scared. Eric scoffed. Of what? Oma hesitated, seeming to wonder how to begin or perhaps if she should begin at all. I don't know, Eric. Maybe you're, you're too young to understand this. I'm not, Oma nodded thoughtfully. No, I expect you aren't. Well, now that I've gone and woken you up, she sat on the side of the bed and patted the mattress next to her. Eric sat and Quill joined him. You see, Eric... When we lost Dan, it was an awful thing to say. But at first, I didn't think I wanted to live anymore. I had your mother to think about, though, and my church and my friends helped me. And slowly, I learned to cope. She paused, then, then said sadly, But Big Daryl wouldn't let anybody help him. He closed himself off from everyone, even your mother and me. I've tried hard to understand it. And what I think is that he was, she hesitated, protecting himself, trying to make sure he'd never be hurt like that again. Do you see, if you don't love anything, you can't feel the pain of losing it, Oma sighed. Then murmured, that's the problem with grieving. The dead can begin to matter more than the living. She touched Eric's shoulder and smiled. Your mother couldn't stand to be around Big Daryl. The way he was so quiet, angry acting all the time, she left as soon as she could, and it was like we lost her, too. When she sent you out here to us, I can't tell you what it meant to me. Having a boy around the house and the dog brought a lot of old feelings back. Then when you left, she shook, she shook her head. I couldn't bring myself to tell your mama. I didn't want to worry her when she wasn't anything she could do. But also, I, I couldn't bear to have her think we drove you away, too, she sighed. And for Big Daryl, it was as if he was losing Dan all over again. Eric recalled the man who'd caught him in the barn saying, 
The old man was plenty upset at the time. Eric had been sure that meant Big Daryl was angry. He shook his head and said again, I'm sir, I'm really sorry. Well, I'm not, Oma said firmly, but it was awful for both of you. It was, Oma said, patting his hand, but it was wonderful too. It brought Big Daryl back. Oma gave his hand a squeeze and got up, saying she wanted Eric to get lots of sleep. He was left to contemplate what she had said, every bit of it, confusing. He had expected to be punished, he even felt he deserved to be punished, and yet, for reasons of their own, Oma and Big Daryl had forgiven him. At the same time, he felt remorse for putting his grandparents through such worry, he tr treasured the days he had spent on the prairie with Quill. He didn't regret any of what he'd experienced, even the bad and the scary parts. He even felt a weird sort of pride that he'd been uh, wily enough not to be found by the searchers and that he'd come back on his own. He had wanted to make big, real decisions that had consequences, and out alone on the prairie with Quill, he had. They had survived, and, and that felt good and important. But what he didn't did mattered here, too, in the world of people and family, and he had never imagined that such a momentous change as the one that had taken place in Big Daryl could have come about because of something he had did. He thought the question posed in his mother's drawing of the geese, how will you live your own wild life? It was a good question, after all, even for a kid, but it was one he'd have to keep asking and answering. There was one part of it all that he did understand clearly, the part about being afraid to lose what you love, because he loved Quill, and now he had to give her up, and he didn't know how he was going to bear it. In the morning, Eric heard the phone ring. When he went downstairs, Quill scrambling behind him, he found Oma and Big Daryl sitting at the kitchen table, their expressions grim. They both smiled when they saw him, but the smiles quickly faded. They exchanged a glance, and Oma said, We'd best tell him. Eric not, or Big Daryl nodded. He looked at Eric and said, That was Mike Duvushin. He's taken the day off to come for the dog. He'll be here in two hours. Eric had known in his heart that this was coming. After waking, he had lain in bed, stealing himself for the time when Quill's owner would come for her. And still, the news struck him with such devastating force that it took his breath away. He realized part of him had held out hope that it wouldn't turn out this way, and that he and Quill would remain together. I'm sorry, Eric, Oma murmured into the silence of the kitchen. Eric couldn't speak. His eyes filled with tears, and to hide them, he quickly bent down to pet Quill. Several moments passed before Oma handed him an envelope, saying gently, This came while you were gone. It was a letter from his parents, mailed just before they left home. His father wrote that he was proud to be serving his country, despite the upset in their lives. He said, I hope in time you will, you will come to understand that sometimes in life we have to do things we don't want to do. The right thing to do is sometimes the hard thing. His mother wrote that she hoped he was getting on getting on well with Homa and was learning to stay out of Big Daryl's way, and that he didn't mind being in North Dakota too awfully much. They both said how much they loved him and looked forward to seeing him again. Reading it, Eric marveled at how much had happened since he'd been an angry goodbye to his parents in New York. The letter in his hand might have been written in to a different boy. As Oma made breakfast of bacon and pancakes, he wrote a letter back. He didn't tell about running away. There was no need to get them all riled up, especially now that he was home safely. Instead, he told about how he'd gone hunting, after all, and how great it had been, and how North Dakota was pretty cool once he got to know it. He signed it, Love Eric, and hoped it would set their minds at ease. After breakfast, he went outside with Quill. They walked over to the row of trees and sat, their backs to the house facing the prairie. The weather had turned mild again, and the sun gleamed on the fields of unharvested wheat and sunflowers as if on a golden sea. He explained to Quill that her owner was coming for, although he knew he didn't under she didn't understand. By saying it out loud and going over and over it in his head, in his mind, he knew he was really trying to prepare himself. 
You are the best dog in the whole world. You know that, don't you? You saved my life out here. You taught me how to hunt. I'll never, I'll never ever forget you. He wrapped his arms around her warm body and sniffed deeply so he would never forget either. And the familiar, earthy smell of her fur, which held, with, held within it the sharp, clear scent of prairie grass and open air, he thought about losing what you love. What am I going to do, he whispered into her neck. All he could come up with was that he'd have to hold tight to his memories of their days together. And to the things he still had. He'd go to school on Monday, and maybe it wouldn't be as bad as he had feared. He'd keep on going. What else was there to do? He would do the next thing that needed doing in the next, and, the, and try to find new things to love. When Mike Duvishin's truck pulled into the driveway a few minutes after 10, Eric was ready. He stood up and watched as Mike got out of the cab, looked around, and spotted them. Hey there, Flash, Duvishin called. Quill ran to him, her tail wagging. Eric had prepared himself for this moment, but still it wrenched his heart. Duvishin bent down to pat her, and when they had finished their greeting, he stood up. Quill, Eric would always think of her as Quill, stood midway between them, her mouth hanging open in a dopey grin. You must be Eric. Eric stepped forward and put, his hand, put out his hand. Eric Carlson, sir. Duvishin hesitated, then shook Eric's proffered hand. Behind him, Eric heard the kitchen door open and close and saw that Big Oma, or Oma and Big Daryl had come onto the porch. Mike Duvishin nodded to them, then turned his back, turned his gaze back to Eric. Well, Eric, I don't, I don't know quite what to say to you. You stole my dog. I was mad as hell. I was considering taking legal action against you, but I hear she was in pretty good shape from that porcupine and pine and you helped to doctor her. Eric swallowed, but found he couldn't speak. I understand you got pretty attached to her too. Eric nodded. I can see how that would happen. She's a great dog, maybe the best I've ever had. Did she hunt for you? Eric nodded again, afraid to even talk. I spent a lot of hours working with her, you know. She's got all the right instincts, but a dog like this needs to, a lot of training to be the best she can be. Eric managed to murmur, I know, and she is the best. Eric Duvishin shifted uncomfortably from one foot to the other and said, Hell, I just want you to understand that this dog is special. I know. If she was just any old dog, I might have let her go. But I wouldn't give her up if she was mine either, Eric said. Duvishin took a, took a deep breath. Well, listen, you probably saved her life, and I'm grateful to you for that. Eric nodded. Okay, then, Uvish said, obviously uneasy and ready to be on his way. I guess we'll be, we'll be taken off. Eric was sniffing the edge of Oma's garden. Quill, Quill was sniffing the edge of Oma's garden, and Eric called her over to say goodbye. He thanked her for being his dog for as long as she could. He whispered that he loved her. She licked his face. Then Duvishin got in his truck and called, Flash, here! And she hopped right into the cab and sat beside him in the passenger seat. Eric remembered Dr. Bob saying, That's the beauty of dogs. They don't dwell on the past. He was glad for Quill's sake that her heart wasn't being broken the way his was. He watched until the truck disappeared. He kept on watching until the only sign of it had remained. The only sign of it that remained was the whirl of dust it had, it had raised on the gravel road. When that, too, was gone, blown off by constant prairie wind, Eric turned away carefully. He climbed the porch stairs to where Oma and Big Daryl stood waiting for him. Oma placed her hand gently on his cheek for a moment, but nobody spoke. For a while, Eric took a deep breath and looked around. The broken step caught his eye. He pointed to it and said, Big, said to Big Daryl, I saw some tools and scraps of lumber in the barn. If you want, we could try to fix that busted step today. Big Darrell gazed down at the porch as if we were seeing it for the first time in a long time. Then he looked at Eric and nodded. All right. Oma beamed at them. Why, thank you, Eric. What a nice idea. To Big Darrell, he said, 
I remembered when you built this porch, you and Dan. You used to be quite the handyman, Big Daryl said slowly. I guess there's a lot of things I used to do. He looked at Eric. Maybe I just wanted a boy to do them with. I'm ready if you are, said Eric. The end.